The Acer Helios 300 is a popular gaming laptop, but just how hot does the newest 2019 model get? In this testing, I'll be taking a detailed look at thermals and seeing how much we can improve performance with some simple changes. The Acer Helios 300 is available in different configurations. My model has the Intel i7-9750H CPU, 80 watt NVIDIA GTX 1660 Ti graphics, and 16 gig of memory running in dual channel, so expect different results with different specs. You can find updated prices for different models linked in the description. On the bottom of the laptop there are a few air vents up the back over the intake fans, and we'll see how well these work with the cooling pad soon. In terms of heat pipes, there's just one shared between the processor and graphics, so it doesn't look like much in the way of cooling. Though there are four heat sinks in total, two for each fan. The fan on the left has metal blades, while the one on the right is plastic. This allows air to be exhausted through the two vents out the back, and then the two on either side. Something I noticed was that the power cable has this sort of thick head, and when running it out towards the back, it does sort of block some of the exhaust on the left. By default, Acer has actually undervolted the laptop by minus 0.125 volts, which is great to see. So we are expecting above average results compared to the competition at stock. I've tested with both the default settings and with the turbo profile. The turbo profile will increase the power limit of the CPU and overclock the graphics. The CPU is undervolted out of the box regardless of what mode you use, so it's always enabled. Thermal testing was completed in an ambient room temperature of 21 degrees Celsius, so expect different results in different environments. I've tested idle down the bottom, and it was on the cooler side. The rest of the results are from running combined CPU and GPU workloads, and are meant to represent worst case scenarios as I ran them for extended periods of time. The gaming results towards the upper half of the graph were tested by playing Watch Dogs 2, as I find it to use a good combination of processor and graphics. The stress test results shown on the lower half of the graph are from running the ADA64 CPU stress test with only the stress CPU option checked, and the Heaven GPU benchmark at the same time to fully load the system. Let's start with the stress test results. At stock, so still with the default undervolt, the CPU was reaching 90 degrees in this test. With this setting under this workload, power limit throttling was the main barrier. However, it was occasionally peaking into brief thermal throttling territory. It just wasn't constantly happening, at least in my 21 degree room. Once we enable the turbo profile, which can be done by simply pressing the turbo button above the keyboard, the temperatures of both the CPU and GPU drop as this sets the fan speed to maximum. As mentioned, the turbo profile boosts the CPU TDP, but despite this, we're not seeing more heat. We'll see in the next graph how clock speeds were affected. I've also gone one step further and pushed the undervolt as far as I could to minus 0.17 volts and this saw the temperatures drop by a further 3 to 4 degrees, giving us around the same results as using a cooling pad with the turbo profile and stock undervolt. When we combine the cooling pad with my best possible undervolt though, we're seeing some very nice temperatures in this workload. The gaming results saw a similar pattern to what was just explained for the same reasons. And even with the turbo profile enabled, the results are pretty good compared to other machines I've recently tested under the same tests. But again, we can make further improvements by undervolting further or using a cooling pad. These are the average clock speeds for the same tests just shown. We're seeing a decent improvement to the CPU and GPU clock speeds just by enabling turbo mode. This is because it's overclocking the graphics and raising the power limit of the CPU, allowing for increased performance. As we saw in the last graph, despite these boosts, the faster fans were able to keep the temperatures from increasing. In pretty much all cases with turbo mode enabled, we're able to hit the full 4GHz all-core turbo boost speed of the i7-9750H CPU in this workload. It is worth remembering that I am only testing ADA64 with the CPU only option checked. But at the same time, to be fair, I've always used this setting. And these are still great results compared to other laptops I've recently tested. The ASUS SCAR 3 comes to mind, which struggled to hit 3GHz at stock in the same workload. These are the average CPU TDP values during these same tests. We can see the increase that happens with turbo mode, as this boosts PL1 from 45 watts to 56 watts. Even under these combined CPU and GPU loads, it's still able to get up there without getting too hot as we've seen. Now just for a bit of fun, let's see how some of these workloads go without the default minus 0.125V undervolt that Acer put in place out of the box. This is kind of a useless test, because it's unlikely anyone is going to go out of their way to remove the undervolt, but I figured it might be a useful data point if you wanted to compare my results with other laptops I've tested. 
Just remember, we've gone out of our way here to make the default out of the box performance worse. Turbo mode without the undervolt under the stress tests is actually a little cooler, because it's hitting the power limit sooner and running at lower speeds. For similar reasons, most of the results are similar to the default undervolt, at least in terms of temperatures. It's a different story when it comes to the clock speeds though. We're seeing significantly lower performance without the undervolt, more in line with what I'd usually expect. That said, the power limit boost from turbo mode still gave a nice improvement to CPU clock speed, but it just goes to show the benefits of shipping it undervolted. These are the average clock speeds while under a CPU only workload. Again, keep in mind the stock setting has their default undervolt, so it's almost able to consistently sustain the full 4GHz all core turbo boost of the i7. Despite there being not much change to clock speed, we're seeing nice improvements to the temperatures, as turbo mode raises the fan speed, while my additional undervolt helps further. This is because less power equals less heat, and the CPU TDP lowers with my custom undervolt, but rises a little in turbo mode as a little extra power was needed in this test to get the clock speed all the way to maximum, as this wasn't quite possible without turbo mode. To demonstrate how this translates into performance, I've got some Cinebench CPU benchmarks here. Again, the stock result is with their undervolt in place. But once we enable turbo mode, we're able to get a nice improvement, with a little extra with my additional undervolting. These are the results for the older Cinebench R15. As a less intensive test, I saw no difference between turbo and my custom undervolt. So how do these performance boosts actually translate into games? I've tested with the exact same Windows, Nvidia, and game updates installed. I've tested with stock out of the box settings, so still undervolted, with turbo mode enabled, and with turbo mode plus my extra undervolt. Far Cry 5 was tested using the built-in benchmark at 1080p. There's a lot going on here, so let me explain. The purple bars represent stock settings, so still with the undervolt, just default fan speed and no GPU overclocking. The green bars are with turbo mode enabled, so higher fan speed, CPU power limits raised, and with GPU overclocking. The red bars are with the same, but with the undervolt pushed further to minus 0.17 volts. And we can see that this might be too far, as in this game, we're getting lower 1% low performance at most setting levels. In any case, the boosted CPU TDP limit from turbo mode is what seems to be giving us the increased performance here in this game. The GPU overclock would help a bit too, but as a CPU heavy title, it would be making less of a contribution. Basically, as long as you just hit the turbo mode button, you should be getting great performance without doing much else. If you're after more gaming benchmarks from the Acer Helios 300, check the card in the top right where I've tested 20 different games. As for the external temperatures where you'll actually be putting your hands, at idle it was just below the usual 30 degree average. While gaming with the fan at auto speed, the WASD keys were a little warm, while the middle was warm to the touch. Similar results with the stress tests going, getting to about 50 up the back, though you won't be touching there, so no problem. With the stress tests going and turbo mode enabled, the temperatures drop back a few degrees due to the faster fan speed, despite the improved performance this mode provides us. As for the fan noise produced by the laptop, I'll let you have a listen to some of these tests. At idle, the fans were just audible. Though, as we saw, temperatures were still cool. While gaming with the fans on auto speed, it was a little below average when compared to most other gaming laptops I've tested. Same results with the stress tests. But when we enable turbo mode, which applies our GPU overclock and raises the CPU power limit, it gets quite loud. However, you can control the fan speed through the Predator Sense software to find a happy middle ground. Overall, I was very impressed with the thermal performance from the Helios 300. Granted, most of this is down to the out of the box stock undervolt. This is great to see, and I hope more companies start doing it in the future. At stock settings, it was running a bit warm, but even worst case, thermal throttling was minimal and only during brief spikes. Though this will vary based on room temp. It was possible to improve this by boosting the fan speed, with additional undervolting, or using a cooling pad. Considering the performance we're seeing in games compared to other high-end machines, I'm pretty happy with these results. The 180 watt power brick that Acer include with the Helios 300 appears to be adequate for these specs. I wasn't seeing any battery drain during any of my testing. With my Heaven and Ada 64 tests running, it was using about 9% more power with turbo mode enabled. These differences in performance shown aren't hard and fast rules. There are different factors which will vary results, primarily the temperature of the room you're running in, application of thermal paste, and even the specific hardware which comes down to the silicon lottery. 
You may not be able to undervolt or overclock your hardware the same as me. It depends on the chip and its specific power requirements. So don't just blindly copy my settings and do some testing to find out where your stable point is for best results. In the case of Ace's stock out of the box undervolt though, in my case it did appear to be stable, I didn't have any issues with it. It may be possible to further improve temperatures by swapping the thermal paste. However, as this is a review unit that I have to send back, I'm not able to change the paste. Otherwise the next reviewer will unknowingly report different results due to what I've done. Additional undervolting, boosting fan speed, or using a cooling pad are much easier for most people to do anyway. And as we've seen, these tweaks did help improve performance of the Acer Helios 300 gaming laptop. The undervolt out of the box is a great step in the right direction, and I hope we see more of that in the future. Let me know what you thought about the thermals from the new Acer Helios 300 gaming laptop down in the comments. And do you think companies should undervolt out of the box more often? If you're new to the channel and interested in this laptop, you'll definitely want to get subscribed so you don't miss the upcoming full review.